In this lesson, we are going to take a look on different requirements for Microsoft Defender 4 Endpoint. First requirement which stand out is licensing requirement. We have mentioned before that Microsoft Defender 4 Endpoint is software as service offering and as such it is completely based in the cloud. Therefore, traditional old operating system licensing model has been moved to a cloud-based subscription licensing model. Now, when we talk about licensing requirements for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, please note that Microsoft often changes their licensing offers and packages. And what you will learn is how licensing is at the moment of this course recording. For the current licensing state, it is always most convenient to check official Microsoft documentation, which is publicly accessible on internet and is for free. This documentation provides licensing requirements. Different than past models of other anti-malware products where licenses were device-oriented, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint licensing is user-oriented. License has to be assigned in order to be activated so that you can gain access to the appropriate resources in admin portal, and each license supports up to 5 endpoints. Which means license covers the device and not the user, even though the license is assigned to the user. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is available in two plans, Endpoint Plan 1 and Endpoint Plan 2. Both of these plans are available either as a standalone services with standalone licenses or as a part of some other Microsoft 365 licenses. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Plan 2 contains the same features as Plan 1, but additionally has some more features which Plan 1 doesn't have. For example, device discovery, device inventory, threat analytics, advanced hunting, and more. According to that, Plan 2 licenses are more expensive than Plan 1 licenses. Please note that in scope of this course, we will also explore Plan 2 features which are not included in Plan 1. The best way to choose which licenses you need is to check Microsoft official documentation and take in consideration prices and features to see whether it would best fit for you to take standalone licenses or as a part of some other Microsoft 365 licenses. For example, you can see that here in my tenant I have Microsoft 365 E5 licenses. Let me show you that. So here on a portal I will need to switch to Office 365 portal, show all, and under billing and licenses, you can see that I have Microsoft 365 E5 licenses. And if I go to users, active users, if I choose one user which has Microsoft 365 E5 license, here you can see that this user has Microsoft 365 E5 license. And under apps, you can see all services which are included in Microsoft 365 E license. And you can see that Defender for Endpoint is one of them. Now let's mention a couple of things for second requirement, which is network requirements. Internet connectivity is required on your devices for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint solution. It can be both direct access or with the help of proxy. It depends on whether your organization requires endpoints to use proxy to access internet or not. You have to make sure that in your organization environment Win HTTP services are enabled because endpoints use Win HTTP to communicate with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Also, in case your organization's proxy or firewall blocks traffic and allows only specific domains, Microsoft provides a list of all Microsoft Defender for Endpoint service endpoints which need to be accessible from your devices. There are also some other requirements for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint solution, like browser requirements for accessing administration portal. Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome are supported browsers, even though the other browsers could work, but they are not officially supported. It is recommended that you check supported list of Windows versions for your devices. That list changes over time, depending on release or removal of versions as they go ahead. For virtualized environment, there are some things related to supported versions that are important to note. Such as that machines running mobile version of Windows are not supported, 
and Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 2090 is recommended to use for virtual environments. When we talk about other platforms, Android, iOS, Linux and macOS are supported operating systems as well. But I am not going to list supported versions or distributions of these operating systems because it keeps changing all the time, so it is best that you check that in Microsoft official materials. In Microsoft's official materials. Before deploying Defender for Endpoint, you also need to ensure that the diagnostic data service is enabled on all devices you wish to protect. This service is typically enabled by default, but sometimes could be disabled by other programs or manual changes. That is something we will talk about more in some of the next sessions which will cover onboarding of devices. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint depends on the ability of Microsoft Defender Antivirus to scan files and capture information available on endpoint devices. So you will need to ensure Microsoft Defender Antivirus is turned on on all your endpoint devices. Enterprise environments and large organizations usually apply group policies to devices. So if you have some group policy that turns off Microsoft Defender Antivirus, it is recommended that you exclude devices you wish to onboard to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint from that group policies. And that's it for licensing and other requirements. In next lesson, we will explore and navigate through Microsoft Defender for Endpoint administration portal.